at some point in every sim racer's life, you get to a point of, do I have enough sim racing hardware? Then you go out and buy more because race car. Well, if you haven't made the jump to VR, then something you might be interested in is a digital dash display that can give you important information that could potentially be blocked by your steering wheel or just your field of view settings. This brings us to the Renovatio SRD R3 digital dash display, featuring not only critical car information, but important race information as well. The SRD R3 display provides to give you all the information you need in a compact, no fuss package. But does it succeed? That's what we're here to find out. The Renovatio SRD R3 is packaged really well. Coming in at 113 by 68 by 14 millimeters, it nicely walks the line between big enough to see, but not too big that it's hard to mount slash see behind your wheel. The curved shape also helps to make sure that the wheel doesn't block any of the screen. Materials wise, the screen is clear, bright, the rubber light coated frame feels nice to the touch, and the clear back gives you a sneak peek of what's going on inside. Speaking of the back, it features a mini USB port and two M2.5 threaded holes. The location of the USB could be good or bad depending on how you mount it. For me and my custom mounting solution, I preferred it on the back versus the bottom or the side. For Darren, who had the unit before me, the USB port got in the way of the Velcro attachment route that he went. In the end, I do think that the center back position is the better way to go. Also, the Renovatio SRD R3 display comes with a plenty long USB cable that should have no problem reaching your PC. But if you are wanting an alternative length cable, like something shorter, you can go to Renovatio's website where they have plenty of nice alternative options. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest challenges of a standalone accessory, and thankfully, Renovatio goes to good lengths to ease the issue. As we mentioned earlier, the display has two hard mounting locations, which is nice. Although you think it would be a no-brainer to have hard mounting points, it isn't necessarily a default when it comes to accessories like displays and button boxes. Not all of them have hard mounting points, but thankfully the SRD R3 does. Now, if I do have one critique of it, it's the size of bolt that's needed for it. The M2.5 bolt was impossible for me to find. I went to multiple hardware stores here locally and I couldn't find something that small and I was forced to actually go to the Imperial side of things and get a 256 by one half inch long bolt with a number two washer to use. And it ended up thankfully working, but it'd be nice if they would up that size a little bit to maybe like an M3. Besides just having threaded holes, Renovatio also offers wheel mounting kits for the Logitech G27, Fnatic CSR, and all versions of the Fnatic Club Sport wheel base. And if you're a Thrustmaster user, you can go to rickmotech.com and pick up a wheel mounting kit for the T300, TX, or the TSPC slash TSXW racer. But since I wanted to mount the SRD R3 to my AccuForce V2 wheel, I decided to go the custom route. For about $10, I was able to accomplish this. I went out and I bought a piece of wood and I cut it to proper shape. And then I secured it to the back of the AccuForce wheel button box that has two plastic holes that aren't threaded but are actually there on purpose for the purpose of mounting a dash display. So I went and I attached the wood to that. Then I went and I colored it black by using a black Sharpie, which surprisingly turned out pretty well. And then I went and I attached the SRD R3 display. Lastly, I got a short USB cable that I had laying around and I attached it to the USB port on the back of the AccuForce wheel button box. 
By the way, in our review of the AccuForce V2 wheel, I wondered out loud what the use was of a USB port on the back of the wheel button box, and then the second cable that ran from the controller to the PC, since it used up another USB slot, and those are very valuable in sim racing, where you use up a lot of USB slots. Well, now that I have the display mounted, I clearly see what the pros of having this is. The USB on the back of the wheel button box was always made for a display, and then that second USB running from the controller to the PC powers said USB port. So now that I actually have it used, I see that it's a very nice thing to have, and I'm happy to have it. The SRD M3 gaming software that comes with the SRD R3 Dash is really well done. It's easy to install, has a good user guide right there for questions, allows you to pick and choose game plugins, gives you a good number of Dash options on an easy to follow screen, and allows you to save your configurations. It also gets updated fairly often, which is important in a third party software like this. Besides configuring the dashboard, the SRD M3 software has two other tricks, V Dashboard and V Telemetry. V Dashboard is a digital dash on your monitor that is nicely laid out and has options like adjusting gauge color and angle of tachometer. It's nice, but I didn't really find much use for it with the SRD R3 display mounted because it would block its view. I mean, you could move it off to the side of the screen, but it looked kind of goofy there. As for V-Telemetry, I did enjoy exploring it. It's not the most dynamic telemetry tool, but it does allow you to see a breakdown of your laps with speed, RPM, steering angle, throttle, and brake inputs, etc. Most of all, I found it useful in analyzing how well I was maximizing my braking. If I do have one minor issue with the SRD M3 software, it's the fact that you have to use the software to launch the game from it. I have an issue with this because if you have other software that also require you to launch the game from it, it can cause some issues, which is exactly what I experienced. So with the AccuForce V2, I have to use Sim Commander for software, and I actually launch my wheel profile and the game from the Sim Commander software. Well, the issue I was having when I go and launch a game is Sim Commander 4 would knock out the SRD M3 software and then my dash wouldn't work. Now, Darren, using the same hardware and software, didn't have this issue, which was strange. After we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to solve this, we eventually threw in the towel and just came up with a workaround. That workaround being, I launched the game via Sim Commander 4 as always. Once in game, I all tap out. I then go and go to the SRD M3 software, click the check button, which goes and runs the dash through a little check thing where all the lights come on. And then after that, the dash works without any issues. So it's a, it's a minor issue, but it, it can be a bit of a frustration if you do have other software that does this. But then again, I don't know which software you blame. I don't know if you blame the SRD software. I don't know if you blame Sim Commander. Again, they're both trying to do the same thing and they're just not getting along. So I had to go and have this little workaround for it to work myself. When it comes to actually using the SRD R3, there's good and bad. On the positive side, there's a lot of good information there, such as gear, speed, lap time, fuel left, and sector splits. And if you want different information like water temperature, position, live gap time, flags, if you're in DRS zone, and more, you can do that via the dashboard configuration. Where things start to go a little sideways is when it comes to the shift points. The dash has 16 white LEDs showing the full RPM range. The issue is, with all the LEDs either being white or purple, it makes it pretty tough to know when to actually shift. While it's easy for you at home to see when I should be shifting with the camera pointed right at the dashboard, you have to remember that I'm watching the track, not the dashboard, and I have to be able to catch the lights out of my peripheral vision. This is why pretty much all racing cars use a combo of green, yellow, red, blue, and purple lights to make it easy for a driver to see when they're supposed to shift in the red band. Without this difference, as I found out with the SRD R3, it can be tough. To improve the situation, I tried a couple things out. First, I turned the brightness level all the way down to try to differentiate the white LEDs on the rev band. This did help a bit. The band is made up of three different size LEDs, so there was an attempt to differentiate them, but it still didn't help enough. Plus, while you're driving, it's really hard to tell if the RPM band is at the last LED, or second to last, or even third to last. You just don't have time to count out 16 LEDs while you're driving. This left the full RPM gauge pretty useless. As for the top six purple RPM LEDs, at first I didn't have much more confidence in them. The default full range setting in the dashboard configuration had all six of them on pretty much all the time, which isn't very helpful. But then I played around with the options and started to make progress. 
A few of the standard profiles work well out of the box. The green and red profile, although the lights are purple, the software labels them as green, red, and blue, go figure, worked well on the Pro Mazda and iRacing. I also found the F1 progressive setting to work well with, you guessed it, the 2017 Ferrari F1 car and Assetto Corsa. The lights turn on as you would expect they should, and the last one would light up lower in the rev range, the ideal spot to shift for the current F1 power units. But outside of those examples, I spent a lot of time manually adjusting the rev light points and saving it as a profile for the car. This process worked, but it's kind of annoying to do for every car, and the slider to adjust when the lights come on isn't as accurate as I would like. It pretty much always skips two or three numbers, and when there is a difference between the light coming on and 92 versus 93, this matters. It would be nice if you could just go and type in the number yourself. I also played with some other shift indicators on the SRD R3. I changed one of the alarm lights to RPM red zone. I did this because the light is red, and I thought a different color would help. The red light is more noticeable, but on many cars you are actually hitting the rev chip by the time it comes on, making it not very useful. I also played with the audio gear shift beeps that the display can give out. At times I felt like they were pretty accurate, other times not so much. Plus with me using my speakers for game sounds and a headset for voice talk, hearing the beep is near impossible. In the end, I was able to get the top purple LED lights to assist me in shifting. But I'd be lying if I didn't say that it would have probably been easier to just catch a color change out of my peripheral vision than actually having to pay attention to see if a light was lighting up. While 159 euros isn't cheap, it is in the ballpark of other displays and is a lot cheaper than the previous price of 229 euros. What is well priced are the mounting kits, which only cost an extra 10 euros when bundled with the display. If you do decide to buy them separately, then they cost 34.90, which isn't terrible either. Lastly of note, the SRD R3 comes with a two-year warranty. I prefer using the Renovatio SRD R3 digital dash display versus not using it. A major pain point that I have with all the different hardware that we test around here and just my setup in general, in my pursuit of having the most realistic field of view, which is something I'm a real big stickler from. I really like to make sure I'm at the height of the driver, which is normally a lot lower than most people set up their cars at. And while I'm able to get a really cool field of view, especially with my monitors, it tends to knock out the dis on-screen displays, whether it's on the dash or if it's on the actual steering wheel in car. So I've been in big need for a digital display to relay that information to me. And for the most part, that's what the SRD R3 does. I mean, having even something simple as what gear I'm in, especially when I'm driving like in rally, is really helpful. There's plenty of times where I've tossed the neutral because I've lost track of where I'm at in a hairpin turn. So having that is helpful. Knowing where my fuel at is very helpful in a race. Uh, having my lap times, uh, knowing I'm in the DRS zone, you know, all these little things, it is very helpful. Now, unfortunately, what isn't as helpful as I was hoping for are the rev lights. This is probably my most painful point when it comes to me not being able to see the on-screen dash in-game on my monitors because I don't always know when exactly to shift. So having rev lights is really important to me. But unfortunately for a design decision I don't fully grasp, going with having LEDs that are all the same color, even if they are slightly different sizes, it just doesn't make enough difference. But having them all the same color, made it a lot tougher on me to shift. And again, you go into sim racing and you see all these different dashboards from all these real world cars and they use all sorts of different colors, the green, yellows, reds, uh, blues, purple. Sometimes they all light up red when it's time to shift and that's to relay the information to the driver. And here with them all being the same color, it makes us so you have to really pay attention. So the whole rev band is pretty much useless to me. It looks pretty, it looks great, but it doesn't really help me. And then, thankfully, at least the purple LEDs, I was able to go and find an option setting that did relay the information to me, but unfortunately, I had to pay some attention to the light coming on, and it, it, I, won't, I wouldn't say it's distracting, I was still focused on racing, but I had to pay attention to it a little bit more than I care for. So um, that's unfortunate, because everything else about this, I really like. The software is easy to use, the packaging is, perfect, a nice clear display. Uh, I think it looks 
great on my wheel. I like that Renovatio has um, different options, like different USB cables they offer, uh, the wheel mounting kits. I mean, all that stuff is really great. But unfortunately, right now, the SRD R3 display, it's, it's good. It's good, I like it, it improves my sim racing experience, it's gonna stay on my wheel, but just having different color lights, or what I'd really like to see, RGB lights that you can go and adjust yourself since RGB becomes more of a thing. If it just had colored lights, this thing would be perfect. Like, I really do believe that. So, unfortunately, it just kinda misses that mark. So, for what you get and for the price, I say it's good and I'm going to keep it on my wheel, but I do understand if you do decide to pass up on it. So that will do it for our review of the Renovatio SRD R3 digital display. If you enjoy this review, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Check out our website, isrtv.com, for the latest news, reviews, and our popular forums. Also, check out the Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Click on the link. Shop through Amazon, doesn't cost you a thing, but kicks back a little towards us and is the best way for you to show support for us here at Inside Sim Racing. So, again, thank you for watching. I'm John Sable. Please take care of you and yours.